Merry Christmas everyone, hope you're all having a wonderful day today, and what better way to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ than to talk about a very old, very interesting Russian 12-gauge shotgun. So, for those of you who don't know or haven't read the title yet, this is of course a Sega 12-gauge shotgun. These are no longer imported into the United States, which has made them a little bit more collectible, or a lot more collectible I should say, and um... Yes, they are very sought after by certain people, certain people love them, certain people hate it. They are generally speaking well regarded online and their prices have gone up considerably from what they used to be. It is important to remember that these used to be very, very inexpensive, cheap imported shotguns, much like what we're seeing nowadays with the, what is this, the Turkish import models like the BF-12 or the GF-12 from a variety of different importers and manufacturers. Now, before we get too deep into the video, I do need to say that this is not my shotgun. This was loaned to me for the video by a very kind gentleman. So uh, because of that, I did not make any sort of modifications or do any of the fixes that you can find online. Uh, there's sort of a witch's brew of different things that you can do to a Sega 12 gauge to make it run with certain loads. But I did not do any of those things as this was not my shotgun. If this was my shotgun, I would have probably done a lot of those fixes before I put a couple hundred rounds through it. At this point, I'm not going to attempt those fixes on somebody else's shotguns, then spend several hundred more dollars on ammunition to then retest and refilm and all that sort of thing. So. Uh, I know some people are going to be upset that I did not get the Sega 12 to run very well. However, I do want to say that don't be upset. Uh, literally, just comment the best tricks and fixes down in the comment section down below so that other people who click on this video can go down there and figure out what is the best way if their Sega 12 gauges are exhibiting the same sort of problems that this one did, at least for me. Now. It is very difficult to talk about shotguns without talking about their magazines. For this video, I was only supplied with two magazines, the 10 round stick magazine or nine round st stick magazine, I believe, and the 20 round drum. Surprisingly, I had zero failures to feed. I believe every single issue that I had with this shotgun were failures to eject. And I believe the reason on this shotgun specifically is that the ejector is a little worn down or it's possibly slightly bent out of shape. Again, I have not actually messed with anything on this, but again, if you have tips or tricks on how to get Sega 12 gauges to eject more reliably, especially on the higher gas setting, which is what we were using most of the time, again, go ahead and just comment those down below. Now, let's go ahead and get into some of the basics. Now, as you can tell, this is a modified shotgun. This is not stock. Uh, Either the owner who owns it now or previous owners have modified this in certain ways, some good and some bad. Starting off with the tip, 
I believe we have well, kind of a breaching slash compensating device. It actually is a very, very smooth shooting shotgun and hopefully you guys can see that throughout the intro and some of the footage that I'll be rolling in is that the recoil on the shotgun is very, very pleasant. This is something that you can shoot all day without issue. I know that some people, you know, they get sore for shooting 12 gauge. I shoot a lot, so it doesn't really bug me at all, but for some people, uh, this is a very, very soft shooting 12 gauge. Not sure if that has anything to do with the fact that it is a little bit under gassed or at least appears to be a little bit under gassed or with it has this big compensator out on the end, which does do something. And of course, is also a standoff or breaching device, if you will. Now, the barrel that we have here is not really a lightweight profile barrel. Again, it is still just a 12 gauge, so it's not like a heavy profile wall, but it does have a little bit thicker wall than I've seen on other barrels. I believe the length in here is 22 inches, and I believe these are external threads on it. Again, I haven't taken any of this apart because it's not really mine, but overall, it is a very, very good length for shotgun barrels. It's not necessarily the shortest, most tacticalist, you know, for your indoor home defense style of shotgun. And overall, it is a fairly long and heavy firearm, but that has to do with some of the other modifications that were done to this firearm specifically. But for most general purposes, especially like three gun and stuff like that, where maybe that extra velocity is a little bit more helpful. Having a slightly longer barrel is going to be quite nice in that regard, uh, whether you're using just uh, really hot competition loads, buckshot, birdshot, anything else like that. Now, moving back from there, on the barrel itself, this is somewhat of a piston operated system, although from what I have read online, people mostly qualified it as a short stroke piston operating system instead of a long stroke piston operating system like you would see on a standard AK. And there are of course a lot of different things going on internally as well. So we do have a two position gas regulator, which is just held in place by a detent. It's a very, very simple adjustment system, which I quite like. It needs to be simple if you're gonna be adjusting it on the fly. Basically, Setting two is your high flow or your adverse setting or your additional gas setting. And then setting one is less gas. So if you're running crazy hot loads, like the owner says that this functions most reliably with three inch magnum loads. I shot all of my three inch magnum loads out of the BF-12 in my last video. I didn't have any more. I wasn't going to, you know, again, go spend a lot more money on it, but I did run five different loads through this shotgun home defense buckshot, um, just some Fiocchi buckshot, some of the Rio buckshot, some competition birdshot load, which is just a hotter like 1300 FPS birdshot load, not crazy hot, but just a little bit hotter. And then just some really basic like 1250 FPS Winchester white box through it. Now, almost exclusively I was on setting two, though I did swap between setting one and two on the same type of ammunition to see if there was something going on. Maybe the bolt velocity was too high on setting two to try it on setting one. And again, I had the exact same issues, which we'll get into in just a minute. Now, on top, or not on top, kind of replacing the whole forend system is this quad rail system that is, um, Fairly interesting. I'm not sure who makes it. I'm not sure if this is one of those really cheap uh, like UTG or Vism, you know, sort of front ends or if this is actually a nice high quality one. It is bolted to the gas tube, I believe, or the gas, yeah, the gas tube and then everything else is kind of bolted to this top section. Um, it seems to work okay if you wanted to add a bunch of stuff to your forend. It is a very chonky forend. Um, and of course, because you have an AK with long magazines, putting in a vertical foregrip or something else up here to index your hand off of is gonna be a little bit more difficult. So personally, I would not have gone with a quad rail. The only nice thing that this quad rail does is have this extended aluminum rail on top to give you access to put whatever sort of red dot you want because if you're gonna be running a 12 gauge shotgun just for fun or for competition, you're gonna want some sort of optic on it, uh, unless you're just doing, you know, like a front bead sight, but again, you're not really gonna get that on a AK style of shotgun. Now, something about this is that it has come a little bit loose over the couple hundred rounds that I put through it the other day. Uh, not necessarily the worst thing in the world, probably just need to be retorqued and then locked tighted and they would be good to go. Speaking of it, just a little tidbit, this is actually a LE, trade-in or kind of disposal of their old, old EOTechs. This EOTech is probably like 15 to 20 years old at this point. Uh, if you ever played Modern Warfare 1, 2, or 3, this is the old, old style of EOTechs that you would see in this, in those games. 
It does have night vision settings actually and uh, burns through batteries basically instantaneously. I had it on for about 30 minutes and it died on me and it uses very short, very special E9 batteries that are very difficult to find. You're never going to find them in a store. You basically have to order them online. So currently this EOTech is dead. That being said, it still has a very good reticle. The glass is still very, very good. Um, and again, for the price you paid for, which I think was like 40 bucks, like absolutely all day, especially if it's going on a night vision gun and it's going to be uh, very, very dim. So that battery life isn't going to be that big of an issue. Alrighty, so we have popped off our top cover here so you guys can kind of see the action. On the inside, it is mostly a K-ish with a couple interesting things going on. First off, I believe it is a special lower receiver uh, because it is, of course, accepting 12 gauge magazines versus, uh, you know, standard 7.62 by 39 magazines. So you do need a bigger magazine. Well, so I believe it is actually a larger, longer lower receiver, though, again, you guys who are really into AKs and Segas can absolutely school me on that. Some of the departures from a regular AK, however, are in the bolt. Not only is the bolt face a standard 12 gauge bolt, but the bolt head itself does not rotate whatsoever. So I believe a standard AK has two locking lugs that rotate into position, kind of like an AR does. Of course, it's an AK and it really has two locking blocks. So as you can see here, this is a two-piece design. So you have your bolt face or your bolt head, whatever you want to call it. And then you have the secondary shaft here that actually rotates into position. So as the bolt face is moving forward, the bolt face is actually locked into rails on the uh, lower receiver. So it does not move whatsoever. And then the locking and unlocking is all done by the secondary position. Now, the bolt face is a standard 12 gauge bolt face. It does have this huge extractor on it that has very decent extraction force. Never had any issues with extraction on these guys. The one thing that of course we did have issues with, and as you will see in plenty of footage going forward, is going to be that we had failures to extract, or sorry, failures to eject almost uh, two to five times every magazine. And before we put it all back together, this is your operating rod and bolt carrier group, essentially, because it's all really one piece or just a couple pieces anyways. You have a singular channel for your locking lug to lock and unlock with, at least on the bolt carrier group itself. And then of course you have your bolt head, which can rotate a little bit, but it's actually locked in place when it's actually running. And then the secondary part of it is the part that actually interacts with your bolt carry group and the locking lugs on the front trunnion as well. Now, something that is basically identical to every other AK that I've seen is it does have a shark fin style of ejector, which is basically just a fixed ejector. And as that bolt carrier comes back with significant velocity, it has a little channel in there for the shark fin ejector. The rim of the shell hits that case and then flies off into oblivion. Uh, normally, AKs have incredible ejection because of that high bolt velocity with the pits piston system and a fixed ejector, meaning that that shell traveling, traveling, traveling at a very high velocity, hitting that ejector, that solid piece of stamped sheet metal, is gonna cause that casing to go flying. However, I believe that the ejector in this shotgun is either too worn down or just slightly out of position, causing it to not properly hit that case hard enough to cause it to fly out far enough to get out of the actual action. So again, I believe the issue with this shotgun is that that shark fin ejector is just bent too far out of position or it's just worn down a little bit too much and needs to be replaced. I was noticing that it had wear marks over the top of it where it should normally only be on the face of it, at least uh, according to my understanding of it. So it does seem like some of the shells are just bumping over top of it, uh, removing some of that material, causing that wear mark versus hitting the face of the ejector, and then again, ejecting those shells out into the ether. So uh, currently I think that is its main issue is just ejection. Again, we were using very hot loads, buckshot, some slugs, different stuff like that, competition loads, and we were still not getting uh, consistent ejection. That was our main problem. Almost all the times, it would like come out just a tiny bit and then as the action was cycling, it would then get caught up in this front feed area. Now the front feed area kind of has these little extensions in it for 12 gauge shotgun shells. Um, it, that's where it seemed to be causing most of the problems. Not sure if those are there just for better feeding, uh, but that was causing a lot of the rounds to get gummed up there. Now they it probably would have gotten gummed up 
just against the face of the uh, barrel and upper upper trunnion, not upper receiver, the front trunnion. Uh, anyways, without those, but it uh, did seem to cause at least a couple of the issues. And again, we were using fairly hot loads, and I believe that ejector just kind of needs to be replaced. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the ergonomics going on back here, because this is a longer upper receiver. Your safety is, it's a long ways away. It's a it's a very long ways away. Unless you have absolutely monstrous hands, there is no way for you to, with one hand, engage the safety. There would be if this was more of a Krebs style safety, which I believe you could take this off so it has a little latch down here, or a little layer down here that you can index on and then take the safety on and off with. However, with this one here, some of the shots I would start up here, sweep it down and then come back or just use my brain and my tr uh, trigger finger as the safety and just don't touch the trigger until you're ready to fire. Now, either way you go about it, the safety, if it was a Krebs safety, I don't think it would be a big deal because you could still reach up with your middle finger, sweep it off and then go right to work. However, with this setup, I cannot reach that whatsoever. So you either have to come across with your left hand, which would be super awkward, or do what I was doing and kind of do the thumbs forward and then go right back to it. But Either way, just something to get used to. It is kind of a downside of most AKs, in my opinion, is they are a little bit uh, ergonomically behind. This one here is, again, the Ishmash facility, I believe. It has some cool stampings on it. So the Sega 12, 12-76. Not sure if that means that it was made in December of 76, uh, or if it's a newer model than that. Uh, the finishing work on it is okay. This one here did come with a uh, rail mount, a side rail mount, which is generally speaking my preferred way to do it so you don't have to put a bunch of stuff on your forehand because this is again a fairly heavy shotgun. It has a longer, heavier barrel. Moving back from there, let's go ahead and talk about the trigger uh, for just a second. Now recently actually, uh, very coincidentally, I got the chance to play around with a Kalashnikov USA, basically just a copy of this gun. And, um, in virtually every way, it was a vast improvement in terms of fit, uh, feel, ergonomics, and all that sort of thing. And it had an excellent trigger, like four and a half pounds, not creepy, nothing like that. This original Sega, though, has heavy take up like you would normally have in an AK. It hits a fairly defined wall. And then you get creep, mush, a little bit of grit, grit and then it breaks. So again, you have a heavy take up, like say four pounds of take up. You hit a fairly defined wall, keep pulling, keep pulling. And there's a little bit more slop in there. So overall, the trigger pull is probably about eight pounds in this specific Sega. It's not bad. It's definitely a mil spec or a duty style of trigger. It is perfectly usable in every way. But I did want to say that um, just the fact that I got to basically try it side by side with a Kalashnikov USA, a brand new one. Uh, their new ones are considerably better ergonomically than these older style Sega 12s. Not that these still aren't cool and of course very collectible. Now, in the back here, this is something really funky. So this is called the Kick Light uh, Patent Pending Stock. So it's basically an AR style buffer tube on there. Uh, it's like all polymer and plastic though, and it does not hold in place very well. It has a single Allen key here that you can tighten down so it doesn't wobble quite so much. But the uh, claim to fame of the Kick Light is that it has a fairly strong spring in there to reduce some of that felt recoil. Now, as I mentioned earlier, shooting this soft shotgun when it was running was a very, very smooth experience. Uh, I'm not sure if that has to do with just the whole operating system and the heavy shotgun as it is with the compensator on front, or if it also has something to do with the kick light stock on it. But again, it's just fairly wobbly and it feels very, very cheap. Again, this entire thing is polymer here and that Allen key had has been tightened down two or three times now, and it kind of just continuously works itself loose. Now, something that I actually forgot to mention on these guys is that they actually have a bolt hold open, which is a pretty big departure from standard AKs that don't have any sort of bolt hold open or bolt release device. However, this does have a device that you could index on your left finger and bring it back. Let me see if I can do that real fast for you guys. Oh, it's stiff, but it works. So you can hold your bolt open to insert your magazines, because another kind of interesting interesting thing with these shotguns is that when they were fully loaded I had an absolutely abysmal time of inserting them without holding the bolt open then inserting them 
uh, to actually get them to, of course, feed. Because when you have 12 gauge shotgun rounds that are sticking up very far, it becomes very difficult to try and index them against the bottom of the bolt. So we either kind of had to come in from a very, very aggressive angle and then just he-man them in, or you had to kind of hold the bolt open and then insert them that way. Or of course, now after, of course, after I figured that out, you do have a bolt release or a bolt hold open so that you can hold your bolt open, insert your 10 or 20 round magazine, and then go to work right after that. So there's kind of the basic rundown of the shotgun in general. Again, this isn't my shotgun, so I did not go out and try to do all the different little fixes to get them to run reliably. I did look up a lot of different things online, like probably 20 or 30 different forums that I scrolled through looking on information on the Sega 12, and most people were basically came to the same conclusion. These are basically somewhat uh, of project guns. They have a very, very good foundation, but they need a little bit of help to get to that ultimate uh, reliability, speed, all that sort of stuff. So there were a variety of people online who absolutely love the Sega 12 gauges, and there are a variety of people online that don't like them because they're unreliable unless you put in some work to them. Now, I know people are going to argue about that all day long in the comment section down below, Go ahead and do that, but try and give your best advice as to how to make them more reliable down there. So again, you're being helped to somebody else out there who's having similar issues. Now the shooting dynamics of the shotgun itself, I would say are actually fairly phenomenal. For a 12 gauge shotgun, a magazine fed 12 gauge shotgun, it is a very, very soft shooting gun. Not sure if that has anything to do with the uh, kick light stock here at the end, or if just that's just how it kind of feels. It's a very soft recoiling gun to begin with. But overall, the shooting dynamics of the shotgun are very, very pleasant. So if you're into 12 gauge shotguns and you get the chance to try out a Sega 12, maybe one that's been tuned up to work properly with whatever load it is that you're using, you're probably going to have a very, very good time. Now, another thing is if you're really into AKs and you want to try an AK style shotgun, because again, there are some departures from being a true just AK in 12 gauge. There are some different stuff going on internally than you would find on like a standard AK. But if you want the closest thing you can get and you want a real Russian Sega 12 gauge, you should be prepared to do a little bit of work to it. Again, depending on your gun that you get, the quality of it and what mods have or have not been done to it by the time that you get it. You're going to have a very, very fun gun, again, depending on if you're able and willing to put in some of that work to get it to uh, its most reliable state. Now, we were running it, again, mostly on setting two because that is the hotter setting. That is the setting that worked the best, though, again, on either setting, it was about 70% reliable with those ejection issues that we were having basically constantly two to five times per magazine. Uh, so we were only, really only able to get a few actual strings of fire out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. It was still fun to shoot the shotgun because again, the shooting dynamics of the shotgun are very, very pleasant for again, a 12 gauge shotgun. Now, me personally, if you were gonna offer me this shotgun today for its going rate, I would tell you thanks, but no thank you. And that for me is personally, uh, just because I'm not really all that into 12 gauge shotguns, I don't do all that much shooting with them. I do not compete with them whatsoever. I don't like three gun matches really. And honestly, I don't do that much more with them. But if you're the type of guy who again loves AKs, loves 12 gauge shotguns, want to see what it would be like to play around with one that is uh, basically the love child of both of those things, uh, that maybe has a little bit of special needs. But if you want that sort of thing, then the Sega 12 gauge is a very, very collectible gun. And again, if you're willing to put in the work, you're going to end up with a very, very cool firearm that will probably only continue to go up in value. So you can shoot it, you can not shoot it at all, you can leave it in your safe forever, uh, you can use it as an investment gun because again, these are only going to get more and more rare because they're probably never going to be imported again. So. With all that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed some of the uh, shooting and malfunction footage of the Russian Sega 12 gauge. And again, these modifications were not the modifications I made to it. So if you're angry or happy, please don't be angry at me. So that's about it. I hope you guys all had a wonderful Christmas, whether you're watching this on Christmas, the day after, or the day before. Well, I don't know how you'd be watching it the day before. But once again, that's about it for me. I hope you guys had a good time with your family and friends. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Go.
Like six or seven in a row there, but 